but the choir says, can I call? And what's his name? Jesus. His name is Jesus. And then Brother Franklin, in his prayer, he said, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is no other name that is higher and above that name. And that name is Jesus. And I just want to share with you, if you're going through something, if you experience some challenges or trials in your life, all you have to do is call that name Jesus. And you don't have to call it loud. You don't have to shout it out loud. Just call on the name Jesus. And be sincere. And if you're sincere and you call on the name of Jesus, he will come through for you. It may not be the way that you want it to come through, but he will come through for you. Amen? Amen, amen. God bless you all. As we come this morning, we greet all of you in the joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We come to acknowledge, we come to reverence, we come to praise, and we come to lift up the name of Jesus. And if you didn't come to do that today, then you're in the wrong place. We came to worship a risen Savior today in his name. It is Jesus. Amen. 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 We want to acknowledge Brother Ford. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the absence of Mrs. Ford. We praise God for her. Brother Harmon, our late president. Sister Janie Cooper, God bless you. And you and you in your respective place. And I don't want to forget my husband and my granddaughter that are here today. We acknowledge you all. Amen. 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 For God is truly good. Amen. 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 And he's worthy to be praised. Today we want to share the word of the Lord with you that is coming from the book of Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. The first epistle of Paul. The first epistle of Paul, the book of Thessalonians. Coming from chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1. And it reads as follows. Paul and Silas and Timothy unto the church of Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father. For a subject this morning that we would like to share with you. Honoring. Honoring God through our labor of love. Amen. Honoring God through our labor of love. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, the creator of all good and perfect we come now in your presence first to say thank you. Thank you for all of your many blessings. As we gather in this place and on the conference call, Facebook Live, virtually, however, we still want to say thank you. But you allow our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. And we come at this present time to worship you. We come to praise you. We come together to thank you for all that you've done and even what you're doing for us right now. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, to fill this sanctuary with your presence. We ask you, God, the blessed virtually, wherever they may be. Let them feel your presence, God. Let your Holy Spirit speak and have his way. Father God, 
God, we cannot do anything without you. All our help comes from you and you alone. We praise you right now. We glorify you and we worship you. Bless us, God. Bless us, God. Bless us, God. With the blessing you see us standing in need of. We love you today. We praise you. And we bless you. We count it all done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Honoring our God through our labor of love. We know that in certain times in our lives, we honor different people because of their value and or maybe because of their positions. But honoring God is not something we do as Christians out of a sense of duty or to gain favor. But it is a daily expression of recognizing, respecting, and of gratitude towards the one who loved us so that he gave up, gave up his life for us. Amen. And we were yet sent. We were yet sinners, but he gave his life for us. In the Bible, there are many biblical instructions for whom we should honor. For example, the book of Deuteronomy tells us that we should honor our parents. Amen. Leviticus encouraged us to honor the elderly. Yes. And 1 Peter tells us we should admonish to honor those who are in authority or rule. Yes. But the Bible verse tells us that we should honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Not only do the Bible instruct us to honor him, but it also shows us, shows us how we should honor God. Amen. We will see in this book, this particular book, how Paul and his companions we're able to see how the church at Thessalonica and how they honored God through their actions, through faith, hope, and love. Amen. We belong to the Lord, so we must honor him 100% with every gift, every blessing, every talent that he has given unto us. Amen. Every aspect of our lives, yes. we should honor our God. Yes. Can I get a witness in the house? Yes. We should give God honor and praise because if it weren't for the Lord on our side, yes. where would we be? We should honor him because if it weren't for the Lord, we would not be here today. It's through his grace and it's through his mercy that he allowed us to be
think about the works that we do here at Greater St. Mark. Our labor of love. So we see in the scripture that it talks about through faith, hope, and love that we honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Through faith, hope, and love. Faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We cannot do anything. It's impossible to please God if we do not have faith. Then it says hope. Our hope is a risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Our hope, but God said, whatever God said in his word, he will do it. Our hope is in the promises of our God because God is able to do all things but fail. God is God, and he's God all by himself. And then our love. Hallelujah. Whatever you're doing, if you're not doing it for love, then it's in vain. Our love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall have life, and that we can have life more abundantly. So what? I don't know about you. I said, Lord, don't let my living be in vain. Lord, I don't want my work to be in vain. Hallelujah. May the work that I've done speak for me. May the service that I give speak for me. I want to live a life that is pleasing to God. I want to, like Paul said, I want to hear well done. Thy good and faithful servant. And then your labor of love. And 
And then your steadfast hope. And your steadfast hope is in Jesus Christ himself. So as Paul greeted the church at Thessalonica, then verse 2, he says, I give God thanks always for you. Are you praying for each other? Reverend Paul this morning says, he says, I want you to pray for the person on the, oh, that is beside you. The person is on your right and the person is on your left. We should be praying for each other. Amen. I don't know what you, but I hope you all in the audience, I hope you're praying for me. Amen. As I stand behind the sacred desk. Amen. I hope you're praying for the choir members. I hope you're praying for my pastor. I hope you're praying for Brother Harmon. I hope you're praying for each other. Paul had a prayer life. He says, I mentioned a few in my prayers at all times. He says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. After Paul had planted this church in Thessalonica, then he went and began to travel. But Paul got a message about this church and how well they continued to do. Paul had planted the seed already. So the seed was being watered and, and the seed was producing. So Paul said, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, in the sight of God, our Father. Then Paul says, knowing brethren, beloved your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you word only. In other words, Paul says, when I preach the word of God to you, when I talk the word of God to you, I was just not preaching and teaching, but I had to live the word. Can I get a witness in the house? I had to live the word. I preached it, I taught it, but I couldn't stay there. He says, I had to live the word. I say to you today, we have to live out the word of God so that we may be an example to someone else. That they may see when you walking, they may see God. When you talking, they may hear God, but they can't hear it if you don't have Him on the inside. Can I get a witness in the house? I thank God for the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of me. Galatians two says, yeah, "It's not me anymore, but it's Christ that lives on the inside of me." So you may look at me and you may. Talk about me, but I'm not worried about it because I know who lives on the inside, and his name is Jesus. Can I get a witness in the house? Anybody in the house know that Jesus lives deep down on the inside of me, and when he lives on the inside, he'll show up, he'll show up, he'll show up, he'll show up. He'll show up. Yeah. 
him. And he says, uh, it's not only me, but it's me that, uh, it, it is he that lives on the inside. And you begin to follow the cross. Uh, and because uh, those that at Thessalonica, they begin to follow Christ uh, because of the example uh, that Paul showed. Uh, I want to let you know today, uh, Greater St. Mark, uh, as a believer, be careful how you walk the walk uh, and talk the talk. Uh, be careful how you show yourself, uh, your attitude, uh, and the way you act. Uh, because everybody is watching you. And if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, uh, then you should imitate that. Uh, Paul says, uh, I want you to imitate uh, the Christ uh, that is on the inside of me. He said to those that Thessalonica, it's not me, uh, but it's the God that lives on the inside of me. I want you uh, to imitate him. Somebody said, uh, in your household, I want you to imitate, imitate God. I want you, when you imitate God, your children, your children, your seed, your generation will imitate God. Then I get a witness in the house. It may not happen the way you want it and when you want it. But if God, if God, if God, if God, if God of your household, they're going to be blessed. to walk 
in the ways of God and bring honor and know but you as you stand to your feet. I don't know but you those that are on the conference call or Facebook Live, but we should bring honor to God in everything that we do. In every aspect of our lives, we should bring honor to God. But it must be through faith, it must be through love, and it must be through our steadfast hope on our own eternal life. So as we come this morning, if you do not know God for the part of your sins, if you don't know how to bring honor to Him, and you want to make a change in your life, this is your chance. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. As the choir sing our hymn of invitation, we invite you to come and open up your hearts and ask God to come in. Those of you on the conference call, open up your hearts wherever you may be. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you do that, he will come in and take up residence in your heart. And your life will never be the same again. As the choir say, we invite you to come. Those of you on conference call, where you may be, just hold up your hands and tell God that you surrender your life to him. Hallelujah. You may be sitting in the presence of the Lord. I want you to just give God a praise. 